Welcome to the Sports on Tap NEO High School Football Show. Be sure to join the conversation by liking us on Facebook and following us on Twitter at SOT Podcast. Use the hashtag SOTHSF. Here are your hosts, Rob Trump, Josh Jeffy, Ed Dick, and Sean Duffy. Welcome to Sports on Tap. It's our Week 10 recaps in the Greater Cleveland Conference, Suburban League, and Southwestern Conference, among other teams. Guys, Week 10 in the books. Next up, the playoffs, and we'll go through it all. I'm Rob Tron. We have Josh Jeffy, Ed Dick, Sean Duffy. Yep. And uh, some important news of note. First off, SportsOnTapPodcast.com is where we post all of our our, <laughs> our information. Uh, Facebook at SOT Podcast on Twitter. Um, you know, if you want to to follow us, we're at different games and give all kinds of different information on the high school football season, um, standing scores, um, anything else out there. We have photos. We have great recaps, um, stories written by Sean Duffy. Ed Dick has been a part of it. He'll be a part of it this week, um, and we'll give you our games of the week coming up as well. But, guys, Week 10 in the books and uh, an exciting Week 10 as uh, we prepare for the playoffs here. Yeah, hard, hard, hard to believe it's over. Yeah, that, like, that was like, quick. That, yeah, I mean, that really escalated quickly. It did. <laughs> I mean, it certainly <laughs> did. I mean, it turned up a notch here there very, very quickly. Bam! Okay. Kicked it up a notch, son. And, and this week we're going to kick it up a notch uh, covering two games this uh, week. Yeah, well, playoffs. You know, we yeah. got to go hard playoffs. to go home. So uh, right. that's what we're going to do. We'll announce where we'll be later on in the show. Um, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. All right. Josh has the Greater Cleveland Conference Week 10 recap. Josh, what happened in the GCC? Well, uh, our game of the week featured Brunswick Strongsville. So um, as a tease, we'll talk about that a little bit later. So make sure you also stay tuned for that um, on that one side of the fair. No more going into that one. But we're going to start in the GCC this week. Uh, the final game for Euclid and Shaker Heights. They, they went against each other uh, in this game. Uh, Euclid defeated Shaker 26-12. to uh, Pretty decent showing by Shaker. Um, they stuck with them uh, for a little bit, but Euclid just too powerful to, um, a, and uh, Shaker was not able to overcome. Uh, but Euclid got this, the scoring off really quickly. It was actually the third player of the game. Uh, Ronald Lee uh, had a 43-yard touchdown run. Uh, in total, he had 19 carries for 146 yards, uh, two touchdowns. Just came up short of Robert Smith's high school uh, season rushing record. Uh, I believe that's 2,042. Just came a little short uh, of that. Yeah, it wasn't for lack of trying. Got one-fifth of those against Brunswick. Right, Rar for sure. Rarified error, for sure. Um, also for uh, Euclid scoring-wise, Aubrey Shabazz, the quarterback, has done a, a really nice job filling in uh this year one rush one rushing touchdown one passing touchdown and of course shaker heights you cannot mention them at all without uh mentioning quarterback jameer demukes kind of the all-around uh player for them uh, on the offensive end 221 total yards and two touchdowns uh as he uh wraps up his season um again euclid with a 26 to 12 victory uh they finished the gcc uh they finished 2017 excuse me eight and two uh, six and one in the conference. Um, Shaker uh, finishes four and six. Unfortunately, they uh, only had one victory in the conference this year. They finished one and six in that. Uh, Euclid will actually host Maslin Jackson this Friday. Uh, Shaker Heights did not qualify for the playoffs. Uh, the other only playoff qualifier in the Greater Cleveland Conference, Menor, uh, they toppled Deliria fifty-five to sixty-six. This is the final game uh, at Eli Stadium in Illyria. Um, and this one was not even close, unfortunately, for uh, the Pioneers. They managed only eight first downs in this game, 102 yards of total offense, uh, and men are really spread the love. Separate, seven different players scored touchdowns in this game. Um, Dante Beckett was the only player to score a touchdown for Elyria, um, and like I said, uh, men, are scored, uh, men are had seven different players score touchdowns. Uh, the statistics, 
statistical leader, easy for me to say, Elijah McDougal, 11 carries, 122 yards, uh, and a touchdown uh, for the Cardinals. They will play host to a big first-round playoff matchup, the Stowe Monroe Falls Bulldogs, Elyria. Unfortunately, their 2017 season tied for the worst in school history. Uh, that w They tied the 2007 team. They are done for the season. Uh, the final matchup that we'll cover in this segment, uh, Medina with a really big victory over Solon, 38-28. Uh, uh, Medina finishes the season at 4-6 and six overall, 3-4 and four in the conference. Solon finishes a uh, disappointing 5-5. Five and five. They are also 3-4 and four in the conference. Solon, four, th uh, four straight losses to end the season. So uh, not, a, not a good way to end the season. This victory for Medina actually snaps an 11-game losing streak against the Comets. Uh, and Medina was led by Dylan Fultz. Again, 235 total yards, four touchdowns. He was doing it. Uh, on uh, both passing and running the ball. This game was tied at 14 at the half. Five plays into the second half, it was Dylan Fultz to Chris Kelly uh, for a touchdown, and that uh, kind of set the stage for an exciting second half. Solon answered quickly after that. Thomas Wilkes uh, with the Thomas Wilkes TD seems like, you know, again, we mentioned uh, Jameer Demukes for Shaker. You can't mention a Solon highlight without mentioning Thomas Wilkes. In this game, he totaled 22 carries, 119 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, but this, um, kind of the cap of the night that really led to uh, this Medina solidifying this victory was an Anthony, Anthony Labata, 44-yard pick six uh, in the fourth quarter. And that uh, allowed Medina to uh, go on top and remain on top, and they get the victory in this one, 38-28 uh, over Solon. Uh, unfortunately, both teams did not qualify for the playoffs in that one. Uh, as I mentioned, the only two teams to make it out of the Greater Cleveland Conference, Division One, Region One, uh, Euclid and Menor. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we'll, we will talk more in depth about the Brunswick-Strongsville game uh, later on during our Game of the Week segment. That wraps it up for the 2017 regular season. Uh, in that of the Greater Cleveland Conference. Such an interesting turn of events in the in the GCC this year compared to last. I mean, last year that Medina Solon game not only decided the conference, but really had a lot of impact on the seeding because Medina went to the playoffs, Solon went to the playoffs. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other teams. Menor. Euclid was in there. Menor and Euclid. Oh, yeah. Menor just missed last yeah, year. I'm right. sorry, but I think that that was Euclid the that was the in. game because yeah. Solon won that game. They beat. Or they kept men are out of it. I think that was the. And we actually covered the Euclid. I think it was St. Ed's. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we were at the game. Euclid St. Ed's game for yeah. the first round. Yeah. So, I mean, to go from having a good amount of teams from the GCC represented in the playoff brackets, both for Region 1 and Region 2, to this year only having two teams. I mean, granted, they're probably two of the best teams in the GCC. If not, I mean, probably the, the two. Well, probably. And you can even make the case that they're probably the two toughest teams in their particular region. I mean,. Who wants to play a Euclid team that is just fast and can put up points and seems to be able to play a little bit of defense and, you know, who can do that? And then there's Menor, who, I mean, they had a, kind of a down year last year to make the playoffs, and now they're sitting right there, I believe, in third place. Yeah, they're, uh, they're in region third. one behind uh, Ed's Ignatius and Ed's, yeah. So, I mean, that's 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 good for them. And now, I'd, Josh, you want to break down what the playoff looked like for those two teams? Uh, sure, yeah. We, we just uh, recently mentioned it. Um, we were a little bit talking about, we'll talk Division One, Region One, how the brackets go. Uh, St. Ignatius will play uh, Maslin Perry uh, in round one. St. Ed's will go against uh, Kent McKinley. All these teams that we're mentioning are perennial, uh, perennial playoff teams. Uh, Menor will host Stone Monroe Falls, and Euclid will host Maslin Jackson. So uh, it's going to be a, a really fun, exciting bracket in Division One, uh, Region One. Uh, a lot of, like we mentioned, High power teams, perennial playoff teams. These are the teams that you expect to be there every year. It's going to be very, very competitive. Any one of these teams, obviously St. Ignatius and St. Edwards, the uh, those two teams are the favorites to come out of this region. But you know, who knows? Uh, a, a team towards the lower, let's say a Stone Monroe Falls or even a Euclid Mentor, could sneak up and, and very easily beat one of the top two teams. I'm still a little surprised at Shaker Heights only getting one win in conference again. You know, I thought they were going to kind of get on a little bit of a roll and, and maybe run with it. And it seems like any time you get into conference play with them, they just seem to struggle. I don't know what it is. 
you know, that the same thing that befell Solon, befell uh, Shaker Heights. They lost a lot of close games in conference play. You know, if Shaker Heights turns it around, you know, if they beat, you know, they they lost to Illyria. Yeah. Like that's their Illyria's only one right now. You know, so figure you, you flip that one. Shaker Heights becomes a five and five team. If they beat Strawsville, they're a six and four team. If they right. beat Brunswick, they're a seven and three team. Yep. These are teams. These are the games that they won last year, and their expected jump was to be able to to possibly beat Euclid, Mentor, Solon. They were able to get it done against Solon, but that was when they were already pretty much out of it. Right. And you played a Euclid team that was firing all cylinders, and you didn't have a chance to make the playoffs at that point. So, and, and they hung with Mentor for a little bit. They are the three. They're the bar of this conference right now. It's Euclid, Mentor, and Solon. If you could beat those three teams, you have a pretty good shot of a winning the conference and b getting a pretty good seed in the playoffs because um, that that's where that's where you need to be. Yeah, uh, Shaker's one of those teams where they're not as bad as their record may may dictate uh, for this one. Um, I I guess you can only say like the the most disappointing um, team in the conference would be Illyria, and, and they would admit that to you too. Uh, just that they they were a team this year that that you know had way too many mistakes. Uh, during the games and, and just weren't playing good football all year. Um, but other than that, with the the way that Medina uh, kind of had an up and down uh, season, uh, they've got some young talent coming back. Brunswick uh, and Strongsville both ha- uh, you know had really much improved seasons. The GCC just got tighter, uh, I think, in, this year, and it's only going to get tighter as we go further. Um, right now, you have Mentor and Euclid this year. Um, the clear top runners in that conference. Uh, but next year we might see three or four teams in this conference that make the playoffs. Um, and that's just what the, the type of conference this is. I mean, projecting forward into week 11 here, the first round of the playoffs in Region 1, I mean, the most intriguing matchup to me is that Stowe, Monroe, Falls, and Mentor game simply because I think those are two teams that are pretty evenly matched and could both put up points but also have a pretty stout defense. So I look for that game to kind of maybe be the, the game that everyone's talking about come Monday morning or Saturday morning, really. Um, again, St. Ignatius and St. Edward, I mean, they're there they're every year, every single year in this division. They're the one and two. They switch places. Sometimes you see a, a, an oddity and they fall to three or something like that. But, I mean, I really do think, you know, the most intriguing game for the first week of the playoffs is is Mentor in, St- in Stone Monroe Falls. Ed, any thoughts on the GCC? No, I'm good. I think uh – you know, we, we've talked about it at nauseum. I think we were going to discuss more of the individual regions a little bit later. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just to kind of put the closing thoughts on the GCC, I mean, this co- this is a conference that kind of – they cannibalize themselves a little bit. And that's a good that's a good word and, for and it. And that's what happens with a with a com, with a with a conference as competitive as the GCC. 